put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Argo Movie Review. 1979, the Iranian Revolution is underway and because of the U.S. support of the Shah, the embassy is attacked, leading to the Iranian hostage crisis. I think that's what it's referred to as. And all of that is common knowledge, but this movie chronicles the exfiltration attempts on, or the one attempt, on the six people who were not stuck in the embassy, who got out a back door. And yeah, the Ben Affleck plays a CIA guy, Tony Mendez, I think is the name. You'll forgive me if I forget because Frankly, when you see Ben Affleck portraying a spy, you see Ben Affleck pretending to be a spy. Anyway, Tony Mendez is an exfiltration expert, and he works at the CIA trying to come up with plausible reasons for... plausible stories for what the six... Americans were doing in Iran and why they most certainly weren't Americans and most certainly should be allowed out of the country. And this is really not a spoiler, it's part of the main concept. He comes up with a fake movie that is then where this movie draws its title from, Argo. And basically, from there on out, the movie cuts back and forth between the six Americans who are staying at the house of the Canadian ambassador, Jack Bristow. And when he calls for backup, you know stuff just got real. The... CIA trying to work out the details and work towards being able to implement the plan and the Iranian people. And something very interesting is that though the movie never lets you forget for a second that the Iranian people are furious it literally, it is an incredibly tense movie. I just spent two hours with my heart in my throat. Sounds a lot more romantic than it is. You're, you're never allowed to forget for a second that they are just furious. There, there, is, there are a couple of scenes where it gets downright claustrophobic and it's, it's pushed to the brink. It was almost unbearable, but it just exactly doesn't get overstimulating. Ben Affleck is really showing a lot of promise as a director. He, I, I still need to watch Gone Baby Gone, but I'm, I'm, this in some ways is even better than The Town and at least as good. Anyway, in spite of this 
tension from the Iranian people. Both sides of this conflict have faces, and the, the Iranian people are not just the bad guy. You, you really understand why they are furious. The movie admits the, the part the U.S. took, or the, the role they played in this, well, I already mentioned it a little in the plot description, I'm not going to get political here, I just, the movie actually does get into that, and the, the first, I don't know, two or three minutes are spent just setting up the context, e explaining to us Westerners why was it that it mattered so much to the Iranian people? If, if you are in denial about what, the, what, what role the U.S. might have had and what, how, how the Iranian people might have suffered, if you don't want to sympathize with them, you do not want to go to this movie, or you at least want to like avoid sitting down for the first two or three minutes. You know, just don't stay out of the... the showing room until then or something because it is it's really really un unpleasant to hear and immediately after this context is set we see the embassy with tensions rising outside and it's also really effective how i mean we see the six the the house guests or what they're called the codenamed, we see them and we sort of get, come to understand their fear and such, but we also see other people in that embassy, and even if, you know, even if you go into this movie not knowing sort of how long it lasted, the, the Iranian hostage crisis of 79, you're, you know, it's still really terrifying. I was seeing all these all these people, and you really get to sympathize with them, and then they're captured, and sort of the the house guests become a a symbol of them. They they become a little bit of the success story of that entire ordeal. And, yeah, that entire ordeal needed a success story, needed something positive to take from it. Excuse me. Now, the... I've already gotten into this a little bit. This has some excellent build-up. The, the way the conflicts escalate in the, in the movie is incredibly effective. Very, very believable. Again, Affleck as a director, it just... Setting up something and then letting it build and build, you you never wonder how did we get to this point. You you can follow it bit by bit. It's it's very methodical and really really effective. It's it's far more interesting than something that just pops out of nowhere. And yeah, it's it's an unbelievably tense movie, and it's also a fairly funny one. I'd say about a third of the humor does fall flat, especially early on, but that does still leave most of the humor being quite funny. Some of it really, really funny. It has some great black, yeah, black comedy with these CIA guys who realize I could be dead tomorrow. My job is incredibly dangerous. This entire operation is a suicide mission, basically. And, yeah, they, they don't lie about that. They just say it straight to each other. Well, you're probably going to be dead tomorrow, so good luck. And it's believable. You, you, I mean, they had to laugh at it. They had to release the tension some, sometimes from having a job like that. So it's believable, and it's also really funny. I've, probably laugh the hardest of those, though it might say more about my sense of humor and then the movie. And then you have these great Hollywood jokes about how, how fake the business is and just these, yeah, you, there, there are a couple of Hollywood types and it's pretty funny. It, 
I've, I've seen other movies that sort of try to make fun of Hollywood. I'd say this is the this is one of the ones that don't go too far in it. It, it doesn't go into farce. And I think that really, in, in general, it's, an, it's a highly credible film until the climax <laughs> unleashes a ton of contrivances. But anyway, yeah, you. The, the, the Hollywood jokes are, are quite good. And it's. I don't remember what the name of the guy who's like the producer. But John Goodman plays this makeup effects guy. And yeah, you just completely. You believe them in their roles, and they have this sort of great. They're a little. They're a little tired. There's you know they're in Hollywood. They know that all this stuff is fake and such. And that's also actually something. This fake film kind of captures everyone's imagination and attention. And there's there's. Uh, it's it's a good thing. I mean, the the fact that the movie it's this this movie itself derives its title from this fake film, and just over the course of it, you see how movies, even with how staged they are, capture people. Tony gets the idea watching one of the original, obviously original, Planet of the Apes movies on TV. And just, yeah, over the course of it, there's also some really blatant product placement near the end. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say George Lucas is rolling in money, but considering recent events, it might actually be someone at Disney. The, anyway, now, the movie is quite talky, there's, there's not a lot of action, but it's still incredibly tense. I also say it's much to the film's benefit that almost all the tension is derived from people, from this sort of lynch attitude, this uh, almost, you know, there, there are practically lynch mobs, these uh, groups of Iranians, and again, you completely understand. It's more that than guns. There's there's very little with with guns in the movie, and there's also very little of sort of big chases and the like. Yeah, talky movie, and it's incredibly effective. It feels very real. And it feels very immediate. Now, the... The vintage look of the, 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 the way it's filmed, and sometimes they also have this, this sort of... grain and, and such effects to make it look like it's from... 79 and England, you know, and they, they intersperse as many period pieces do these actual sort of television, you know, you have little interviews, you have little updates on the hostage crisis. And though you, you deep down know, well, that's obviously, that's added in, they didn't actually film that now and make it look that real. Other than that though, it's incredibly convincing. You don't feel like it stands out. If you weren't thinking about it, you'd probably buy it as part of the movie. And that's really effective. And the, the production design also very, very... One thing that you could really see it on are those huge glasses that they had back then. And the, the moustaches are also very 70s and 80s. These, some of the house guests look like porn stars. Don't ask me how I know that. Now, the... Like I... 
sort of got into the Ben Affleck. I, I like him. <laughs> you know it's bad when you have to start like that. He's not that convincing in this sort of role where he has to... where he's scarred, or where he, emotionally, I mean, or he has a heavy burden to carry, because he's not the, he's, he's Ben Affleck, he's, he's a Hollywood pretty boy, you know, it's, the, the roles that he excels at are the ones that play to that, where, where he is actually just kind of, you know, pretty, and at least not that hardened. I mean, in this we're, we're supposed to buy him as an alcoholic. He smokes, it seems like a lot, and he's sort of maybe getting divorced. I think they're actually separated, but you know. I'm just not sure we really buy it. Keep in mind, I guess 13 years ago, this guy played Jack Ryan, and he was... He came off like a, a little boy whining, and that, that is just not... I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not what Tom Clancy intended. So, yeah, I, I hope that Ben Affleck continues to direct. I hope he keeps it up for as long as he has the passion for it, but I also hope that he maybe considers, if he is to continue starring in his own movies, that he give himself roles where we kind of buy it. That's, I, I, sure he's got the, the big beard, again, fairly 70s, and it looks kind of like Jen kicked him to the sofa for a few nights or something. But beyond that, not particularly. Now, with that said, the cast is phenomenal. And the acting tends to be great. I, I mean, I've just said that he's not that convincing. His acting is still pretty good. I mean, you, you, you sort of believe him in the situations. You just don't completely believe that... Uh, yeah, that he has all this baggage. And really the only bad things I can say about the cast are that some of them are criminally underused. Philip Seymour Hoffman, I think, is one of... And he's just barely in it. Brian Cranston is great in this. As, as sort of the immediate contact of, of Tony. So they have a lot of dialogue with each other. The dialogue is really well written as well. And the, the writing in general is smart and taut. I suppose one other negative you could say about the, the cast and the acting is that there aren't any real standout performances. There's no Jeremy Renner in this. Where, where it's like, that guy's going places. But, but yeah, the, the acting is all great. The characters are a little... We, we don't completely get to know them, though I will say... or um, yeah, Characters like the house guests, for example. But we do tend to understand them. And there are these great little bits where, like, again, very credible, the, the house guests, they're not all enthusiastic about the plan. They're like, we could get killed. And then they discuss, are we safer here or are we safer trying with this insane plan? And that's the kind of thing that could really easily get so obnoxious for the audience. Because it's like, oh no, then we have the guy we're supposed to agree with, and then we have the guy we're supposed to hate. Uh, the, the guy who's just there to 
create conflict because he doesn't want to go. We understand why the guy who doesn't want to go doesn't want to go. We don't hate him. We completely understand. And we're... And, and the guy who said we, we should try this plan out, you know, you, know you, you do get that, well, he might kind of be wrong. You, you do have to really think about the different... And it, it does really well. In fact, I don't think there were any characters that I disliked, really. There, there's, there was at least one character who was kind of clearly, you know, we're, we're supposed to think, oh, he's, he's the bad guy. He's, he represents this new rule. Oh, um, you know, the, yeah, the, the Ayatollah and, yeah. But other than that, you don't, you don't dislike any of them, and yeah, you really understand them. You, if every little bit of characterization and of dialogue we get of, especially the house guests and such, it really establishes, establishes and develops their character. We understand a little more of who they are. It might also be that there are, there are a lot of characters. We have the six, we have Canadian ambassador and wife, we have a handful of CIA agents, two Hollywood guys, there's a lot. Now the... that might more or less cover it, just highly entertaining. I, one of the worst things you could say about this movie is that at times it's fairly Hollywood, but it's the good kind of Hollywood. The, the really enjoyable just re really exciting Hollywood and yeah the, the, the well produced and fairly smart kind please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it